Hello. In this video, we are going to consider how you might go about estimating the hitting probabilities by sampling. What we are doing in this next video builds on the code that we wrote for sampling the hitting times, so you may want to watch the video on sampling the hitting times before you watch this video. The code that we are writing here is similar to the code that you will have written for the previous exercise, so hopefully this exercise will not be introducing you to any ideas that are too difficult. Without further ado though, let's begin. Before getting onto the programming, let's first clarify what we are doing in this exercise. We know that if we run this chain, we will eventually arrive in either state 1 or state 5, as these states are recurrent and absorbing. States 2, 3 and 4 are transient. It is guaranteed at some point in the future we will stop visiting states 2, 3 and 4. The question we might like to answer is how likely we are to finish in step state 1 if we start out from here in state 2. We know that finishing in state 1 is not guaranteed as the process is random and there is a chance that we will finish in state 5. It seems likely that finishing in state 1 is more likely than finishing in state 5 if we start from state 2, but we have no way of knowing this for sure if we do not calculate the probabilities. Let's thus learn how we can calculate these probabilities by brute force sampling. To write a program to estimate the likelihood of finishing in state 1, we are going to use the Markov move function that is shown here and that was introduced in a previous video. If you do not yet understand this function, I would recommend that you go back and watch my previous video where I explained how this function works before continuing. With these prerequisites aside, however, let's get on to writing a function that generates the final state that you finish in. If you have already watched the video on sampling the hitting times, you may already have some ideas as to how to go about writing this function. Let's go through it slowly nevertheless, even though it should not be that difficult. We're going to call the function we are writing final state, and we will pass three arguments as shown here. The first of these arguments, A, will be the transition matrix for the Markov chain, which you should specify using the numpy array command that was introduced in previous videos. The second argument, S, is the state that you are going to start out from. Ideally, this would be one of the three transient states. You could pass S equals naught or S equals 4 here. You know, however, that you will just stay in that state that you started with because those are the two absorbing states and there is no way of getting out of them. The final argument to this function is end s. This is a numpy array, a 1D numpy array, that contains the list of all the recurrent states in the chain. For the transition graph shown at the top of the slide, this is thus a two element array that contains the numbers 0 and 4, which are the indexes of the two recurrent states in our transition matrix. Remember here that the first element of an array in Python is element 0. The labels of the states in our program are thus one less than the labels that are shown in the diagram. The code for generating the final state is going to look something like this. We use a while loop here as we did in the code for generating the hitting time because we want to continue generating moves until we arrive in one of the recurrent states. This first part of the code checks if we are in one of the absorbing states that are listed in the array called end s. If the code finds that we are in one of these states, we then break out of the while loop and return from the function. Within the body of the loop, all we then need to do is generate the new state in the chain by calling the Markov move function. If it is then state the state S 
that is returned at the end of the function. The function thus returns the, the index of the final recurrent state that we end up in. The code that we've just written is repeated on this slide. As has already been mentioned, it is not particularly difficult to understand how to write this code if you can write a code to sample the hitting times. The code here is arguably simpler than the code that you've just written to sample the, simpling, the hitting times. You might even have worked out how you can write this code yourself before I gave my explanation and based only on the information in the previous video on sampling the hitting times. There is an important thing to bear in mind here, however, which is that we want to estimate the hitting probability. What we have returned from the code at the moment is not a hitting probability. What we have returned is the index of the recurrent state that we finished within. We can make some progress towards calculating this hitting probability by changing our final state function to something like this. Now, instead of passing three arguments, we pass four arguments to the function. The first three arguments are the same as they were previously. The final argument, target, meanwhile, is the state that we want to end up in. In other words, we want to use this function to calculate the probability that the chain finishes in state target, which is recurrent. Notice that as well as changing the number of arguments to the function, I also change the variable that is returned. I now return the value of a logical proposition. This function thus returns 1 if the chain finishes in state target and 0 otherwise. This is still not a hitting probability I require, but it is a Bernoulli random variable. Now that I have a function that returns a Bernoulli random variable, I can do what I have always done with such functions in the past. I can call the function n times, add all the resultant random variables together, and I can calculate an average. The average that I obtain is then an estimate for the probability that the random variable is equal to 1. If this particular random variable, the one generated by final state, is equal to 1, however, my chain will have terminated in the recurrent state. Consequently, the mean that I get when I call final state and average it is an estimator for the hitting probability that I desire. I can wrap this process of calculating an average in a function and the function that I would get um, would, would need would look something like this. Hopefully this function is relatively easy for you to write as we've written things like this uh, a lot of times in this course already. Notice that we've added an extra argument n here which is just the number of samples of the random variable that I've computed and that this line is estimating the probability by doing this average. I hope all that's reasonably clear. I hope also that you're now starting to see how even though what we have done, what we're doing now is far more complicated than what we were doing in the first couple of weeks of this course, it still relies on those fundamentals of calculating averages, histograms and so on that we introduced in those first few weeks. Yes, we have introduced a whole new language of Markov chains, recurrent states, transient states, and so on. When we analyze the results we get by sampling these things, however, we are still using algorithms that are our old friends, namely calculating means, calculating histograms, and so on and so forth. Thanks for your attention and good luck with the exercises.